Hi guys, Jamie here from the Old Creamery. I know it's been a wee while, six months, um, but I thought it was a really good time to get back on YouTube because we've been so busy with the business um, and show you what we've been up to. So the last time I think we did our farm tour, it must have been six, seven months ago. Anyway, and I think a lot has changed since then. There's a lot of infrastructure being put in place. We're now in full operation as such. Um, we started doing our first mail order plants for the last three weeks, which has been tremendous. Um, still small numbers, just as we try and iron out any issues with our postage and making sure all our customers get their babies in one piece. Um, but so far, so good. And Australia Post, um, our local courier service, has done an amazing job. I cannot believe that they get them from our post office at 4.45 at night, because I'm literally the last one in there. Um, so that they're on the road at the, I guess they're in their boxes for the least amount of time possible from our end. Um, but Australia Post has had them like to the other side of the country in less than 24 hours. Like the next day, some people in Queensland and we're in like Victoria. Um, which is about a 16 hour drive. Um, obviously they fly, but you know what I mean? Long distances and they are there. So amazing work. Um, but anyway, so I'm in what was the dairy back in the day when the old farmers had it. And that's what we repurposed into a one cow stall over here for our one cow on the farm. Um, and... All the feed troughs on this side, which I'm going to show you in a second, um, will be where we've converted them into our heat beds and our propagation. So you've seen them through my videos when we've been doing our cuttings, but we're still going, but we're nearly wrapping up our cuttings for the season, but I'm just going to turn the camera around so you can see. So here we have what's going on in here. So this is our heat beds. Um, so as, just as a recap, if you haven't seen my previous videos, we have them on sand. And then beneath the sand, there is the underground heating system, which keeps the temperature to 18 degrees. Obviously, we're in the height of summer in Australia, um, so it won't be working at the moment. And then evenly spaced throughout is our misting system. So this is automatic, five seconds every half an hour to an hour at the start. And that just stops these little babies um, transpiring and then wilting. And as you can see, on the whole, they're looking really healthy. So our success rate in here is about 100% now, literally, which I'm not bragging. It's taking a bit of work and time and effort. Well, we're not going to be 100% this week, because there we go. We have a... Put him in there. Mystery row. And I'll leave him up there so I can update our spreadsheets later. Um, so that's how basically I set up. The lights are 16 hours a day. They're also timed and... For those who don't know how we take cuttings, here's our leftovers. But in here we have the tubers. The tubers are growing. As they get tall enough, you're a bit too big over here. We take a cutting. We then put it in our little rooting area. And then every cell of ours is updated onto a spreadsheet. So as you come over here, we've got all of our spreadsheets. You can go polytrip 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc., etc. And then up top, each cell accounts. And that is backed up on Google Drive. So worst case scenario, I drop my laptop, we break something. We can see what we're up to. And then we have our labels. So as we head through the back, I'll quickly show you the office space. On the left, we have Sky. You can see it's very humid here today. We had a bit of rain earlier. Excuse my mess. This really is the farm side of the business. There is our little tractor, Flambeau. And that has helped us get all of our beds prepped and anything else we needed for the first season of the year. So in here is our complete office. So we have jars for our relishes and jams, which are stored up there. We have our cool rooms. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. And a trusty trestle table, which can go from, I've just been doing flowers today for a girlfriend. Tonight that'll clear down because I've got flowers to do for tomorrow. And then that's also our packing bench for when we get our mail orders. My little office over here, which is linked up with our printer. And literally we just have a software program we can type into what our plant tags are and they print out from here. So we'll head back out to where we were before, so back around to the dairy. And we've got this little walkway, which I'm hoping one day when we all make it look a bit pretty. A bit where people can come, they can stand here, we can do a bit of presentation, they can see us in action doing all our cuttings, and then we're going out to what I call my show garden, which is the biggest mess in history at the moment. As you can see, it's a work in progress. But we've got a bit of colour just starting, and my plan for this area really is 
to be like a living catalogue of all the collection we've got. So we've grown about 350 individual cultivars on the farm. Obviously that grows every year, but in our cut flower section, because we're cutting that and processing those flowers for the florists on any given day, when we have guests come to the farm, I want them to be able to see colour, flower. They want to come and see dahlias. So, and why wouldn't, want, why wouldn't they? So this is ideally where I'm not going to raid this at all for the florists. It's just my little pleasure garden and you get one or two of everything in here. So, and then we have our shade house. So I think in the last videos when we were talking, I don't know if I even brought you up here because you would have been in the dairy and all out here was a big fire pit. We used to have calves in here. It was a big mess. So this is six months later, we've changed it all. As you can see, we've got our raised beds. So there's one, two, three, four, five small beds. There's a bed just over the back here and I've got six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And they're about 20 meters, these big ones behind me. So obviously once we've taken our cuttings and they've got roots, then they come into our hardening off house, so the shade house. So let's have a look inside. As you can see, we have a few babies in here. Not as many as were last week, I've done the plant out. So we had try and do alphabetical, alphabetical order, starting at the top end. And let's have a quick browse there, and you might be able to see some names you'll recognize and want. So these plants in here range from anywhere to two to three weeks of age. Some are probably about four weeks. And basically what, what they're on this side is that I go through them Monday and Tuesday with Gareth and we work out where our numbers are at in the paddock. So we're still planting. Um, we're gonna keep planting for about another month. Um, and that's just helping us make sure we've got all our stock levels where we want them to be for the coming season. So we aim to have about 10 to 12 varieties in the paddock for anything we wanna keep. And then when we have that, they come over here. So these are now gonna be ready for sailing probably this week. There's a few who are still a bit small, so I don't want to risk them um, getting obviously dying in the mail. So we make sure they're a good healthy size and can cope with the transport. Most of you who have ordered off me before will have bought them in these square pots. We've actually just moved on to some round pots from our supplier, um, which means we should be able to get more in the boxes, which will lower the shipping costs overall for everybody, which is fantastic. So every single time we do a mail out, again, it's our first season. We're just trying to hone in on what worked, what didn't work, what we could do a bit better, and eventually move towards a more greener model. Obviously, we don't want to keep using plastic pots, but at the moment, that's the best way of getting them to you and making sure the roots are all safe, we've found out. And if they don't sell, all the varieties that all our wonderful collectors out there have already got, and there's lots of them around. So we're talking like Bushfire, Siska, Hotshot, the old, the old ones as such from the, the comeback, if that's even the way of saying it. But basically they're going into these bigger pots where we're either growing them out for our wholesalers. So we sell plants to a couple of local retailers um, or I'll grow them in that for the season and I've just got extra stock if needed and we can give them to charity auctions and other things. As we come down here, I call this special row. So basically anything in here is I'm still taking cuttings of and probably will for as long as I possibly can. So we're talking about things like West Coast, Pental Watermelon, We've got a few of them I haven't seen flower before. Coral Ball Jessie's always popular. Um, there's even, where's my wall lily? Kelgale Anne, if that's how you say it. But that's going to be very popular this year. So these are all my mother stock plants and cuttings. So we keep three or four of them here and a couple in a paddock so we can make sure when they flower that we've been taking cuttings of who they say they are and we don't have mix ups. And my baby snapdragons. So as you can see, we've created a bit of a monster for ourselves, but it's awesome. So we will head down the paddock. I'm just gonna go around first of all and give you a bit of a, give you a bit of an update on our seedlings. So I know most of you would have bought some seeds off me maybe earlier in the year, and I hope they've all given you some beautiful flowers. So predominantly the seeds that we planted this year all came from a couple of varieties along the Mystic Range because we love the dark stemmed foliage and thought we'll throw some seeds together and see what we can get. So predominantly we've got a lot of single flowers, which you do anyway, but we've, we've got a larger percentage, I guess, than we would have hoped for. But I'll have a quick look in here. And this is the first round of our seedlings. So for those of you who are eagerly eyed, there are a lot of singles in there. There is a couple of pom pom -ish ones. There's a little gorgeous red there and a very dark stem, but it's got an open center from a showing point of view that we're not gonna be able to do much with that. 
Now I'm going to try zooming in on this little one here. Because I'm in love with this one. And I don't think it's going to be able to do anything and it's not the best. I did have eight, there was a really nice one with eight pedals just perfect every day. And now this one's looking a bit crossed over. So we'll just see how it goes. But nothing else, I might just keep that one for ourselves. And just over the back here. This little baby. Who quite potentially, if we hold, hold holds on to that centre, could be a nice little dark stem decorative too. So if there was any in there you really fell in love with and you were able to post to you, um, keep in mind because we will be selling most of that seedling stock at the end of the year um, rather cheaply because some of the died they're not a named variety or anything, they're just nice pots of pops of colour, um, which will go well in any garden border. So we're just heading down the what we call our, well not call it our driveway, it's a driveway. And you'll see the end of our Agapantha rose as we go past. So we've had a lot of unfortunate weather here in Australia. Um, as you can tell, it's the middle of summer and we're having wind, we're having rain, we're not in 40 degree heat, which we're somewhat accustomed to. So we're all getting a bit of a battery. I'm just gonna do a pan because right behind me is the flower patch. And I should put a link in. If I can find how to find the old videos, I'm going to put one in because that was literally six months ago. A bear paddock, maybe seven. I'll give it seven months ago. in there we've raked up all of our beds um, with the new flambo the tractor so and while I, on a, I guess while we're talking about the tractor as such so you'll hear about we talk about we do regenerative practices so I, ideally when we bought that tractor we've used that once to go over the beds and that has tilled all of our beds to about eight inches deep from that point all we've done is put brand new compost on soil on top of that soil um, from a local provider and it's really, really fine, really good nature compost and things are just growing really well. And you'll see as we go around that the dailies are doing really well. Considering the season we've had, we've had quite a lot of damage from the wind and we're still going around and I'll show you some of the different methods we're using to try and help them and stop them falling over in the wind. So in this paddock, the dahlia wise, we're now up to about 987 individual plants. Um, don't know about the cultivar numbers because we're still building that and we're still planting on a well, every time I can get a chance to. And I'm very much, I get out in the morning at five, six o'clock in the morning, and that's when my tubers go in, or my cutting, sorry. And we go from there. So we'll start down the white row. So first of all, we've got on our right is our granny bonnets. So if they're also known as aquilegias. Um, so we've got a full row of them. On the far side are all our tree lilies and the gladioli. And down the bottom is the start of our princess lilies, or ostrum lilies. Um, but they're all quite short, and obviously these are just their first year, and they were just in to help them get established, and hopefully we'll have bulbs and etc. next year. Um, but we go down our white row. Now remember, traditionally at home, these plants are a lot taller and bushier, because we're using these for the um, cut flower industry. We're constantly in here cutting, and we cut really deep, so that we get, as the plant moves forward throughout the year, we get really big, long stems, which are perfect for the florist. So we're looking at about the length of an arm, 50, 60, 70 centimeters is an ideal stem for a florist. So this little baby here, this colorette is called Q, K-E-W-E, -E. and just a nice little baby pink. And then most people will know by now, because she has been around a while, Anne's Delight, this is a, I call a large decorative, Around here I've also decided that she's now a weed because she seems to be popping up in every bed which I did put her in, but that happens too. We've got Jodie Lynn, this is a new one for us this year, but I'm loving that baby pinky yellowy touch. 
and this year it definitely seems that the, the fimbriated and the cactuses are all back. This is Amarlene Joy. It's one of the first flowers, so it will improve as time goes on. Um, and the whites also had a lot of issues with mite damage at the start of the season, so they're still sign of recovering. We have our water lily, white supreme, followed on by my love. Now, for the eagle eye, we'll notice that we're getting quite a lot of issues with this center. Now, it doesn't harm the plant in any way, and it's called a I'm going to call it a fixation. And from what my understanding and the research has been, is that it's either caused by a bag biting them, and we're still trying to find out whether it's an earwig or a caterpillar or something, but I haven't, it's happening throughout the whole patch, and not just dahlias. So my thought is, rather than it being a, a massive bag problem, is the heat we've been having is going from like 36 degree weeks back to like in the 20s. And that constant changing of high, low, high, low can cause like a genetic mutation but from all my research most plants do get over it it's just gonna be it's, we're having a bad season for most plants like learn daily is we're having a bad season as people but like we just thought if we know half a mile for a meal or some days um and you'll also see as we go around we're still actually getting a lot of pop centers on our dahlias and the reason that happens is that with this I said we have that cool morning the cool mornings trigger the plant to think, oh, actually, we're going to go to breeding season. So they start opening their centers, which means the bees come in, they pollinate, and they go to seed. So traditionally with your dahlias, we don't get that until April, May time in Australia. Whereas on the whole, we've had that the whole season through, which is a bit disappointing. And we've got a show, our show cycle that starts in about a few weeks' time. So I hope I'm not the only one having this issue. As you can see... This one is Clearview Tammy. So it's a big white cactus, but again, we're going for that greeny center. But I'm lucky that the florists are quite forgiving around here. Um, as we come down, we have one of my favorite dahlias, which is Clarifora. And I'm not sure why I like it, just it's the color or the form I like. It's just, and there's not many um, Stellas in Australia. And we're looking at size-wise again. I've just bought the ring show rings. And I don't have them with me, but how many hands can one person really have? But again, and as we come across, we have Katara. Who is probably a large? Could be a cat. Um, I was going to say a large, large, a large, large. As we go around this patch. I'm just going to quickly show across to this Ostrom area here because this is called Indian Summer and it is getting quite popular. Now these do grow about another 30, 40 centimetres tall. But just look at the dark stem and that vibrant orange, even in full sun. Like I've got some growing in part shade and th there's not much difference. So you'll see through this row we've actually got the, um, the wire netting. So it is like a floral netting, so it is quite bendable and, and you can... Carry a, carry a roll around without much too, too much difficulty. I mean, I'm not saying they're easy. And then throughout it, we've got them coral, coraled or supported by our wickets from last year. And that just help, has helped all the gladiolides grow nice and tall. So we should have done this ideally for all our dahlias, I think, and probably gone two rows. And they're just supported on the ends by our star pickets, which are just slightly on a bit of an angle. Uh, but we didn't. And our dahlias have been growing quite robustly as they do. So I've trialing having a, just a piece of wire going through all the way along. And ideally in some we go, oh, we're going to go back and put a second wire in. We're just trialing whether, because we're cutting them and they're quite low as plants naturally, because of that deep cut all the time, we may not need to. Um, but what that has really done is stopped the flopping around a bit. And if there is wind, like they're holding themselves quite well and they can't go too far. They can just push against the wire. And as they're getting bushy, obviously they do help each other carry up. We've got the clouds again. We're still in that. We've just moved to the other side of that row. Just look at them. Um, so I'm sorry, I digress. I get distracted, but we'll come on, it's dahlias. Anyway, so we are trying them with this one wire system and it's really helped to try and straighten some of the stems up naturally on a couple of plants which were struggling at the start. Um, but some of the taller varieties, as you can see, we've now put the two rows in 
and I think that's probably a good idea for those naturally growing taller varieties and your top heavy blooms. Um, as we come through we've got homicide which is like as you can see I'm not sure how good the color is going to come up on these but they're they really change from this yellowy streaked red to this almost peachy salmony color too and I've noticed that the ones growing in the shade have a more salmon so just something for that and this is I'm pretty sure mountain aurora but it could be Kenora Sunset, which is a bit bleached. Usually the red on the Kenora Sunset is a lot more vibrant. And again, because we're having this weird centre going on, it is making a bit of difficulty at times with what's happening. And I must admit, I'm not a huge lover of yellow. But anyway, we do have yellows. And look again, it's just perfect example. So if you know much about dailies and you know what's called or plants and you know what's actually causing this and what we can do to fix it, please do drop me a, a comment in the bottom of the video. That would be amazing. Then here we've got a new one, and it's not gay bright eyes because that's the one going behind it. I'm gonna have to ready around here to find a tag for you. I keep coming coming to it every time, and I'm like, who is it? Who is it? It is. Can you see? Kiara. Kia, Kiara Lee. And I'm tangled with all the microphone. Sorry guys, but you can see how healthy they are. Now, we talk about bugs a lot too, and you'll see on some of these leaves, they're sort of like white speckled. And that's traditionally caused by white fly. And that's little sap sucking, and they're tiny. We don't probably have them too badly now, because they're getting towards the season where they move on, but their damage has been done. So I don't worry too much about them on the whole, because they do sap a bit, but not enough to, call, to be detrimental in our cases to our plants. Um, but it is something to monitor and watch for. Now, anyways, we go back to this Sakiara Lee, which is this like baby buttery colorette, and it's a show quality one too, so it's why it's in this patch. And then coming up, we've just got opening up here is Florally Toffee, which if you have heard of the Florally range in Australia, are all bred by Florally Farm over in Ballarat, and predominantly they are cat flowers. So. Nice long sturdy stems, great for the florist and shit, and they just cut and come again, cut, come again, cut, come again. And just look at some of the colours on them. You could almost eat it. Here we've got one of the first flowers, lemon snow. So I'm hoping some of these bicolours we're noticing, because we also grow um, cornflake which is very popular this year, and that is this big orange one you've seen at the back of the rose here. But just before we get there, I better come down and show you the pom-poms, because the pom-poms are just so in vogue at the moment. And here we have Glen Mark, or Glen Bank. Glen Mark, Glen Bank, Glen Mark. I'm going to say Glen Mark Honeycomb. I'm probably wrong. But yeah, so we go up here, so we've got cornflakes. So cornflake has really, really been popular the last couple of years. Now what cornflake does is actually why, and it's why I like the bicolors, is you actually get two plants for the price of one. Because as the season usually gets towards the end of the season, and we hit the cooler weather, they go like this. But at the start of the season, all of those outer petals would be like that lemon snow we just looked at and be pure white, and you have this vibrant orange centre. So again, it just shows the show that we're having such a weird season, I guess, in Australia. It's just bizarre. That's the zinnias, and we'll wheel head down the zinnia row shortly. But we'll come in and look at, uh, we're in the orange rows. So we've got the start of our um, winky whoppers, which again, they're just, they're struggling again with whatever this center is, and but it's just gonna be one of those hard years. Now this is a, our first ever seedling we ever grew on the farm, and it was seeds we got given by a local flower farmer, and we called it Love Child. I just like, I love it. And if you can see in the back, which I find like this, this two tone at the back of the petals are just like this really, really off yellow. And then you get this vibrant yellow at the front. So for all time's sake, we had to keep it. Not knowing that when we planted it, we were actually going to plant it near Delbad Gange, Gange, which is, could quite simply be its parent. But not. We're completely, this is a new variety for us this year. But they just, they do match in quite well together, don't they?
And I am thinking that you are one of the, um, scratch some tags around. Glenmark Renegade. Renegade, Renegade. And again, we're just hitting a lot of this scent and it's really disappointing because you can do all this hard work. That's not too bad. But I just hope at the end of the day, like we're still quite early in the daily season. So this could all improve. Um, and it's not affecting everything. It's just a couple of the varieties. Kung Fu, Bushfire. Again, we've just stunning with those streaky kind of looks. And as we come through, we've got Merlot. It's gorgeous blue when it's when it's proper. Again, just getting this bit of fimbriation or not fimbriation, um, fixation happening in the centre. Just look at these little peach balls. Well, I'm going to say balls, but they're not really balls. They are a decorative. If we're going to be technical, this is a variety called Darborough Highland. And as we're going to go down, we're going to find uh, one of our cacti, Sunburst. And I guess you just got to learn to love nature for nature. And every year is not going to be perfect. But apart from that, they're just... They're firing on all cylinders at the minute. This is another semi-cactus called Tuscany. Just look at those, um, what, Tuscany colours, I guess. <laughs> We have these all the peaches. So this is another variety by Florally, um, affectionately known as Florally Sea Star. And well, I do, I'll admit, it's not one of my favourites in the garden. Um, it has been quite good to work with the bunches and at different stages of its growth, like you do get a couple of different tones and like in its young, like immature phase, if that's the word to say, it is quite pretty. Uh, moving along, we haven't got many to show because I did cut some today. But here is Pam Howden, the water lily. And then maybe one down here to see just how vibrant the colour it is. These are all Merlots by the looks of them again. So here you go, just the start of a Pam Howden, just opening up there. And you'll see that different form. Um, I have got a nice little water lily as we get round, but I'll show you that shortly. And we're back into so we're almost into these balls now. Just look how they come around and meet at the back. Now I'm fairly sure this is again florally, <laughs> and this is Angostura. So it can be quite variable. It gives these lovely peachy blooms, but occasionally has a fleck of white through it as well. So we've got we're still just planted this row, so they're a bit of catching up to do. But there's a couple I just saw. As we got close, here we go. I'm just going to jump over. See, if this is. I think this could be a bell. Oh, Juliet, as it's also well known. And there's another one over there. Which, if it is, it means it's in the wrong row because this is my something row. Dusky pinky beach row. I won't call that dusky, but anyway, I'm just going to scratch it out. <laughs> And we have, oh yeah, there we go, Belle Julia. So that's good to know. So at least we know that we're, we've got the right cultivar because as I said, there is mix-ups happen. So how we manage that on the farm is that now where they're flowering, my next big project is to go through and put um, tape at the bottom with the correct name on. And then when I get back and have more time to go through and replace all the tags and labels. And we have a homicide coming up. Over the here, this big, blousy, gorgeous, but it's almost blown, but I didn't have my heart to cut it yet, so the florist have had to wait. Is Formby Monarch. But just look at the colours. And if we keep going along, that's another new one. Hmm, who are you? Well, obviously, you're not a tropical trip. Oh, there is one there. Oh. Oh, 
of my old tags. So I used to write on them with the um, the etching tags you used to get. Or you still get. Have a look and see who we got. Christy. Oh, Christy Leader. There we go. That would be about right. Look at that colour. I'll put that tag back in there. Ah. Oh. There you get quite a nice orange form through there. Again, bloody green centres. Another water leaf. Laney's Joy. And just there. Ooh, who are you? So every day there's someone new popping up in the garden at the moment, and it's quite pretty. Salmon Joy. You see who that one is? We got our Bionans. Almost blowing their centers, but I'd like to try and keep a couple just so when people come, there is something to look at. And some, again, as they get older and mature, they do kind of change from this. Here we go. It's almost perfect. Peachy, coppery tone. For some reason, I've got this brush fryer in here. And here is a variety called Cliff Salmon, who has been affected by the wind and needs a bit of manicuring to get back going. But he's got this peachy little flushes through. And I found in the morning when I first came out, that's when they're most vibrant. Here we're into our pinks. Another one just opening there. This is first prize. Just another little stunner. You could be another bell by the look of you. Maybe not. You look, do look like you're slightly different. Oh no, bell. There we are. Now I know you're not who you say you are. And it's a weird name with number two in it. So I do have to go and change that one. Got a little pom pom again. This one's called Pam. And we're going into our marshmallows. Which are just these big balls of baby penis. And we got Brooks, Josh. As we come along, there's, oh, there's more of the um, Juliet's. We've got one of, our, uh, one of our early orchids on the farm, so orchids are quite rare as well. And you can see they're just great for the bees, as you can see right there, and how those petals kind of roll in. Like, I didn't think I was going to like them, really, when I first started growing them, but everything's just a bit unique. And I think that's why I love daily so much, because there really is a daily for everyone. If you don't like one form, you buy a different one. But yeah, I found the um, orchids are quite well in bunches um, and posy jars and things because they give a bit of height dimension to them. So here we've got um, Tropical Dream. Oh, that's another one that's been around a few years now. And I call that an informal. So it is quite, it doesn't really know what it is in terms of form, but look at the colours and how it just sits there like for a garden variety you don't want to show, you just want to enjoy your flowers. Let's look at that. We've got um, figurine, it's another water lily, just starting to open up. Lots of babies. We're into um, our sultan. This is the purple version of bushfire and homicide, really. And a new variety we're growing this year called speckled. And it's like whenever I decide to do a tour, of course, I bring you out here when. Um, basically the colours are already in paddock and when they're already past their best um, because I cut them for the florist when they're at the best and when I I am bad at just going I'll just keep that one it looks nice just look at the form and the colour in it and then we throw, every now and again it throws these weird ones and we've got another yellow Christy marble which just has uh, little peachy reddish brush strokes through and we'll go through the red grip. So we're hoping that we're going to get quite a few reds just in time for Valentine's Day. Um, they are starting to come along. We had quite a big cut early in the season. 
We've got our um, dragon's blood. So it's gorgeous little red here. But I do need to come in and do some manicuring because it's trying to, as you can see, the flowers are hidden down in the stems and it's because we're not cutting them and pinching them out early enough. Most of them we went through and did. Obviously, I've missed quite a few. So we're getting these nice first blooms which are hidden away down there. But they're still usable. I use them for my posy jars. Um, but yeah, we need to be in there chopping them away. And then we start getting this nice stem length, which is desir desirable for the cut flowers. This one is florally raspberry cheesecake. So it's not for everyone. I know not everyone likes these splunch splunches through them, but I do. Splemishes, is that a word? It is now. And again, that's probably the mountain aurora or that could actually be canola sunset. It's a bit more redder. Christmas joy is nearly finished but still looking quite good. We've got some hot shots. Nice perfect red balls for Valentine's Day. And then we definitely have someone who's not supposed to be in a red robe anymore. This is Aegean, 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 Aegean sky. Sounds plastic and yeah, and there we go. We're going to have another little colour right up next to it. It was more of an orange even a red, I would say. Steve's Choice. Standing again in the wrong row. By Fire and Ice. And moving up, we've got Siska. Not Siska. Oh, well, he probably is a Siska, actually. But, oh my God, who are you? Just look how dark this one's going to be. It's going to be interesting when we get to meet for the first time. There's a little variety called Circus. But yeah, again, these, these were... Um, circus has done the same to me every year. As soon as you get mites in, it seems to get really badly affected. And it really affects the flower blooms. And they're very distorted. And it takes it quite a long time to recover. But it seems to do by mid-season. And compared to some of my other varieties, it naturally just takes longer. Um, we have lost one in all of our um, floods, so I'm going to chop that back. I do think it's going to, it's trying to, if you look there and look. See, see how tough they are. It's died back to nothing, and then just there, the start of two new shoots. But I will cut all this back, get rid of it, so it's not being a burden to the plant. So that is pretty much all of our daily rows until the next lot come into full flush. If we head over here, we have our dark row, as you can see. And these are probably not for showing or anything, they're just garden varieties, and I use them in my cut bunches, but just look how vibrant they are when they've contrasted that really dark stem. There's a couple of enemies over the back here. I don't really have many enemies, but just look at the different forms. And that one is Mi, Mi Wei, I believe. There's two, and there's Mu Ling and Mu Wei, and I get them mixed up all the time. But the star of the show in the dark has to be African Sunset. You should just look at that vibrant pinky orange, and you get these really dark stems and green leaves. And they just pop, no matter what time of day. Now, this is one with they say is called African Sunrise. And apparently, some people believe that they're the same cultivar, I don't know. To me, there's definitely a distinct difference. And the foliage is different. So whether I've got something which isn't, in fact, what they call the Sunrise, it could be a mislabel, but we will keep going and seeing what the rest do and talk to our colleagues in that world and try and get an, an, uh, an appropriate identification for you. So our sunflowers are pretty much nearly done. So these were cut earlier in the season and we've just been collecting seed. But we've got a mixture of our hybrid, I call them the hybrid teddy bears, because as you can see, they're sort of middle centered and they've got all these straight pedals and they're like the lost cousin of a teddy bear and i think that's what we've done is that we've actually collected our own seed and the seed doesn't grow true 
each year. Um, but this is our next succession of sunflowers, so they're bloody taller than me. And they're just starting to show that colour, so this week they'll be ready to go to the florist. Uh, so we usually try and pick them just as you can see in there. It's a hint of yellow. And just as that hint of yellow is starting to pop through, that's when we pick and we want them to go to the florist because they get then you at home get the maximum vase life out of them. They're just funky. I was looking at again, they've got this weird genetic thing going on, but can't beat a good sunflower, can you? Now, I'm going to head over to pretty much the last part. Let's see, they've got the, the army. Two camps out fast asleep and one just doing rounds in circles as usual. The zinnias. And I cannot believe how well the zinnias have gone for me this year. Like, they're just a mass of colour. And no matter how much I cut them, I don't seem to be getting any, make a dint on them. They just keep coming and coming. And all the different shades of the rainbow. And I love it when you forget about them. Let's just look at this one. They kind of get to this like almost daily uh, pom pom phase. I mean, look at that, and it's still it's still even opening at the centre, and it's dying back at the end, which is probably like one of the challenges when you go giant dahlias. But they're just stunning, and obviously they're good for the bees. But as we get down the other end, we're growing a variety of queenie limes, and we're going to put more of them in next year because they're just this salmony colour with a touch of green at the heart, as you can see them right coming up here. And they're just, just different. They're just the, the rich orangey tones. So we will be putting some in panics this year and making them available, as well as hopefully getting some seed to sell to you all in um, the spring. So zinnias, just like dahlias, they do like a hot season, so don't be in a rush to plant them when you get the seeds. Like we start sowing ours in Probably late September if we're going to do them in panic trays indoors um, so they're protected but ideally like November is their best time November all the way through to the first frost and the next project on the farm is to get rid of the rest of what's left of some um, sunflowers snapdragons so we had our first crop and we're nearly up to the top of this um like netting we've got for them and they were just they were just amazing but they've now started we've cut them back and they are shooting up and then we'll see how they go i've given them a good feed and we'll keep keep the mortar up to them i reckon we might get enough to do some posy jar kind of work with um and that'll be it they'll they'll come out and we'll replace them with new seed and as we come down we have a look at some straw flowers so they've done amazingly, considering that we only had a few seeds and they didn't really germinate very well and there was a few issues in that area. We've still got quite a lot. Um, and I've just started to try and use some of them in some work. But you can see they're, they're different, but again, we're having this same issue. So it's, it's spreading between, so whatever is happening is not just plant specific or stuff, it's going through the whole place. So again, if you can give any pointers, please feel free to do so. Look at the oranges. I mean, and the reason is these, we don't use them in floral work, they just make such great dried flowers that you can use them at the end of the season. When we're quieter, well, probably not quieter work-wise, but you know, quieter in terms of flower production and everything else happening on the farm. So that is it, guys. So I probably should just give you a talk while we're in here as well. So the irrigation we're using is drip irrigation. Uh, this releases four litres per hour on the one we've got. Um, and then it's all done by station. So obviously the pump can only pump so much. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six beds pretty much per system. And at the moment they are manually controlled. Um, first year going commercial, you know, we can only invest so much and we're still trying to get things right. But 
So every single day to every two days, depending on what's happening weather, I come out here and I um, turn them on, turn them off, and they get 10 minutes or so each time. So it's also a good idea to try and bury your pipes because we didn't want to go down the route of um, weed netting, as you'll see, um, weed mats, because uh, at the end of the day, they are plastic and like hessian bags and you see, they, to me, they just resemble the seed bags and they do last for quite a long time. But ultimately, they do deteriorate, they break, they get ripped. And all we're doing is filling our paddock with microplastics, which we just don't want to do. So that's just how we farm. Everyone else can do how they want to do things. Um, so I've talked on bugs before and you'll see my videos, like all of the bugs we do in here. We really don't use any pesticides um, in the flower farm unless we have to. Um, so we're releasing good bugs. And if we're using a pesticide, we're using an eco option. Um, we go through and we mow everything by hand. We use whipper snippers along the edges to try and keep them tidy. And it seems to be working like, see like on the whole, we've got some really healthy plants going and, and that's, that's going through to our cuttings too. And we're getting that feedback now from our customers that they're loving the robust plants they're getting from us in the mail. So that's really, really positive to hear and keeps us motivated for the next phase. And here is our baby. If you follow us on social media, um, this is Fanta. And Fanta's recovering because unfortunately she did get into some slug pellets last week and was very, not very well. And we're touch and go that she's almost back to herself. So guys, that was a tour of the old creameries and Dahlia patch. Now, I hope you enjoyed it. It probably went for a while, but I think I've just made up for six months of like, you know what I've been doing? Like we haven't just been sitting around, we've been busy. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed it. If you do want to follow us on our social medias, because I must be honest, I post on there four or five times a day. I am trying with YouTube. I know I need to be better at it. And I just think as the business starts to grow and starts to generate an income, because I say like flower farm, it looks very nice on the Instagram world. It's a lot of work. And we've put a lot of money and time into this project. And you know, most days, I don't, well, most weeks here, like I don't get a wage. It's covers costs and we just keep investing what we can so we're here for a long time not a short time and i think that's what we're trying to establish um, and let the business grow organically so if you're thinking about being a flower farmer amazing it's really really good looks awesome life really but it's hard work and it's not all going to be roses and sunshine as they say or dahlias and sunshine and the newest project this week was i finally got a sign up above this above the dairy makes me feel like I've actually got a home in there, you know. If I have all my business meetings with just me, and then I come home and talk to Gareth when he gets home from work. But anyway, guys, follow us on social media. Our hashtags are the old creamery AU. So we'd love to see you over there. If you are in Australia and you'd like to try any of our products, please jump on our website. Our daily plants are released each week at the moment till we get the stock levels right. And obviously we'll probably tail off towards the end of the season as we get towards the tube of protection and looking at that end of it. But we're awesome. We can start sharing some of those plants with you now and help you fill some of those gaps in your gardens. So this is our little two acre patch as well. And so there's a lot of mess in here. We've neglected our own garden for the sake of the business as you do, but we're two years Sorry, two years. We've had, well, pretty much we've had two years of just constant floods, rain, and anyone who lives in Australia, like the weather patterns have been so unpredictable that we're really just reclaiming parts of this from flood damage. So, and I say flood damage, we're nothing like anyone, and we've been very, really lucky, but you know, constant water, two inches of rain comes down, you're underwater for a couple of days, it has to drain away. There's damage to that. But there you go. And that little chuck shed in the back. Anyway, I'm Jamie from the Old Creamery. Hope you've had a good little tour. I will endeavour to spend more time with you on this contraption, as we say, as we move forward. Um, but yeah, all the best and thank you for your support.